Welcome to It's All Geek to Me, a podcast where two friends experience popular nerdy franchises for the first time. My name is Leah, and this season my co-host Kelly and I will be traveling to a galaxy far, far away as Kelly experiences Star Wars for the very first time. And I'm the expert. Let's dive in. And we're back. And we're back. With the next episode. Part two. Before we start, you know I love to talk about other things besides the movie in this podcast. I actually have a a side tangent I want to go on, but I'll let you go first. Well, I just want to say after we recorded our last section, I, if you guys recall, I don't know if anybody even cares about this. Is this an update? Is this a relationship update? This is a relationship update. (laughs) This is my weekly therapy with you guys. (laughs) I went to Ryan and I was like one quarter portion. And he said, I don't even remember the guy's name. Anchor Plut? Yeah, that's something like that. Is. He said the guy's name. And I was like, not only do you know this guy's name, you know his first and last name. You get, you understand the reference. I know you've seen this movie. What an obscure reference. And he was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. And I was like, why would you know this character's first and last name if you haven't seen this movie? He is a liar. <laughs> he refuses to admit it. Although I actually have a theory about him. I'm starting to wonder if maybe he, since he knows obviously that we do this podcast, if he's trying to look up information. to mess with me. But you said some of these things were going on before the podcast. He said one quarter portion for years. He said pod racing for years. (laughs) Meets back on the menu. He said that before I ever dated him. You know, there are some people out there who just like to look up synopsis of films without seeing them. That's true. So maybe he's one of those. He's a big meme guy. So maybe he just knows like all these random All the memes. memes. Yeah. Well, so still a mystery what's going on with Ryan. But you proposed a question to me last episode and I would like to propose another question to you. You were asking me about the attractive level of Adam Driver. Mm -hmm. I would like to know your thoughts on Oscar Isaac, a.k.a. Poe. Oh, wow. It's so funny you say that because I actually wrote that. So hyped that he's not dead, by the way. I know. I did write down in the end of that section, it's crazy that people are going on about Kylo Ren being hot when Poe is right there. Man is a hottie. This whole cast is like just full of stunners, like the entire cast. Except for Adam Driver. Okay, well, mm, your opinion. But I mean, our three like (laughs) main good guys, I'd say, like Ray, Finn, and Poe, hotties, hotties, hotties. Oscar Isaacs wore a dress to, I think it was the Met Gala, and I just about lost my mind. And his wife was in like this suit. My heart was fluttering during this section, but I don't (laughs) want to spoil my thoughts. Well, I'm glad that we're on the same page with Oscar Isaac, even if we're not with Adam Driver. But yes, let us dive in. (laughs) So we return to seeing some jets flying over to what I wrote down was Death Star 2.0. Turns out it's not. Star Killer Base. Ooh, actually, fun fact. I know this is jumping ahead because we haven't talked about the Star Killer Base yet, but fun fact Luke Skywalker Mm -hmm. in episode four originally. Mm His name was Luke Starkiller, and then they changed it to Skywalker because Starkiller sounds evil AF. (laughs) Sounds so evil. Oh my gosh, that would be terrible. They brought it back for this one, though. (laughs) So we actually get to meet Snoke in this section Mm -hmm. and he I wrote he's a creepy looking bald dude a little bit of a Voldemort vibe absolutely massive unit yeah this man is large but we did find out also that he was just a hologram so maybe he's not as big IRL we haven't seen him like oh did we find that out (laughs) miss that well because when they were talking to him when it was over he disappeared oh I thought he just had powers I assumed that that was a hologram oh well he is a large hologram man but anyway he was large though yeah he says (laughs) that the droid will soon be delivered to the Resistance, leading them to the last Jedi. And he's talking to Kylo and General Hux. And he says, if Skywalker returns, the new Jedi will rise. Uh-oh. And I also have to say, I think you definitely were on to something. I kind of did forget this like power dynamic that exists between Hux and Kylo Ren. But there definitely mm-hmm. is one where like they're trying to one-up each other. So what you said last episode about Hux and Kylo Ren being on the same level, I absolutely think that you're right about that but I do not think that Mm -hmm. Kylo Ren likes that because he feels like he deserves more power oh absolutely yeah 
Yeah. They're like brothers constantly mm-hmm. at odds with each other. Except for they're like brothers if brothers wanted to kill each other. Stepbrothers. Stepbrothers. They're like stepbrothers. <laughs> yes. So Huck says he takes full responsibility and he also says that the weapon is ready and he thinks it's time to use it and they can destroy the Republic. And Snoke is like, yeah, let's do it. You oversee it. And then Hux is like, okay. And then he gives Kylo the longest look of like, you're an idiot and I hate you. And then he leaves. Yeah. And then Snoke asks Kylo if he's felt the awakening and Kylo says yes. And then Snoke says there's something more. The droid is on the Falcon in the hands of your father, Han Solo and I flipped out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my first thought was, okay, so this is Han's kid. Han definitely had a little bit of the force, but like, does that mean it's Leia's kid? And I was right. It totally yeah. is. So I called it in our last episode. I said that he was either Luke or Leia's son. Yeah. And I am yeah. so good at this. And I love being right. That was a great prediction. I loved that for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> so then Kylo promises that he's not going to be seduced by the light he is gonna you know take this test because he I guess he has to kill his father I I don't know if that's like what they're saying like your task is to kill your father it's more just like this is who we're going after Mm -hmm. it's your dad you have to be okay with whatever happens yeah and he's like no it's fine I don't even like him that much just kidding he didn't say that yeah (laughs) that guy sucks (laughs) he said something in so many words later to Ray (laughs) yeah oh he did and I was like ah I love this also at the end of this scene it doesn't really come in to play so much in this movie but will come back at some point that Kylo Ren is the master of the Knights of Ren. So he yeah, has he sort that. of a faction of people behind him. So why aren't they calling him Darth Ren? I think he chose his name. Yeah, no, I, I got that, that he should have been a Darth. That would have made it way cooler. And also, what's up with Star Wars trying to confuse me by picking all of these similar names? Because why is it Kylo Ren and Rey? No wonder I thought that was one person. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure where Ren came from. And I'm actually not even sure if the next thing I'm I'm about to say is true or just something that people (laughs) think but the name Kylo they think comes from a combination of Skywalker and Solo Sky Mm -hmm. S-K-Y so you get the K-Y and then low from Solo Uh, Kylo but I'm like that's stupid if that's true because he doesn't like his family so why would he make his new name yeah he wants you don't even know what his name is I just realized no they haven't revealed it yet although I also want to say and this is I guess a spoiler for myself but there's nothing I could have done I always see people saying stuff like Raylo and uh, I guess people like ship the two of them together. Yeah. Not a fan. Not a fan. Don't think too much about the romance. I'm telling you, you were just going to be disappointed. I got a lot of romantic thoughts in this section, so stay tuned. God, it's just a big tease. (laughs) Oh, I was feeling teased. (laughs) So, meanwhile, we've got Han and Rey, and they are piloting the Falcon, and some issue pops up. I didn't even write down what it was, but Rey is like, oh, I know how to fix it. And then Han knows at the same time, so it's like, oh, she knows what she's talking about. Wow. Wow, so impressive. I don't think that the words were so important. It was more just like they get each other. They're connecting. They're finishing each other's sandwiches. You know, things like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so then Finn is trying to help Chewie who is being incredibly difficult with him. Yeah. And he's like, somebody come help me with this giant hairy furry monster. And BB-8 comes over to help. But then Chewie roars at him and then he runs away scared which is hilarious. <laughs> and then Han is like, if you hurt Chewie, yeah. you gotta deal with me and then Finn is like hurt him he tried to kill me like six times already and then Chewie starts choking him and then Finn's like which is fine I'm fine with this <laughs> good comic relief incredible moments I love Chewie I love him yeah Chewie's the best so then Ray does another impressive feat where she fixes something and Han I couldn't tell in that moment if he was impressed or like begrudgingly impressed or if he was annoyed or if it was kind of like giving him a reminder of something but then he's just like all right And then he walks away and he goes over to Finn and he's like, good job fixing up Chewy. And then Finn starts like randomly playing a video game and then he stops. Thoughts? So that was an Easter egg. In the original trilogy, they're playing that game. I remember. So I think that's just what it was. He accidentally turned on like the chess game and I think it was just supposed to be a callback to the first trilogy. Oh, he accidentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like put his arm on the table. Yeah. And the shot lingered for so long that I was like, okay, we get it. Yeah. (laughs) It's a reference. It's an Easter egg. Good job. Yeah. (laughs) So then Han is like, oh, so you're a few 
fugitives, huh? And then Ray comes over and she's like, well, he's part of the resistance. And every time somebody says that, he makes a very obvious, <laughs> like, I'm definitely not a part of the resistance face. Like, oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me too many questions, please. And then BB-8 decides to show everybody the map to Luke and Han mm -hmm. says that the map is incomplete and ever since Luke disappeared people have been looking for him and Rey says why did he leave and Han says he was training the next generation of Jedi and an apprentice turned against him and I was like well obviously this is going to be Kylo right imagine it's like someone totally different that would be hilarious it's Kylo Ren I feel like <laughs> it would be really cool but also potentially disappointing but like imagine if they had just kind of a repeat of the original trilogy where it turned out that Rey and Kylo were like siblings separated at birth or something. Oh. I don't know. I feel like that would be kind of cool. I want to say that where my brain space was the first time I watched these films was in a similar place to you. I don't think so because so many people ship them together. So it just doesn't make sense to me that people would be like these siblings would be so great if they were yeah. intimate. So <laughs> I, I don't think that would happen. <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> but I was thinking one that would be really cool. And then my other thought that I kept on happening throughout watching this section, especially with some of the other characters that we get to see again, I was thinking, how many opportunities does Hollywood have to take characters from a beloved story and show them again within the context mm. of the same story and have them actually yeah. be older? It's just very, very good. It is really cool. But I also think it gets like annoying in the Star Wars universe because whenever a new person like plays the characters like for example the solo movie mm -hmm. is not Harrison Ford that's a different actor playing Han Solo because it's a prequel he's getting old yeah I mean he's way too old to play Han Solo in his 20s yeah and people were mad about that it's like well what are you supposed to do like yeah. if you want to see these characters again you have to give other actors an opportunity to play them but I think in this particular situation it was really really cool that they were able to get you know Carrie Fisher and Harrison Ford back for this film like I think that was oh my gosh really cool and special the fact that you didn't say Mark Hamill worries me I'm just going <laughs> off of what we've seen so far but don't tell me I have so much to say about Carrie Fisher Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill but I can't say any of it yet but there's so much I want to tell you about them I don't want to hear about their affairs because you know I don't like affairs no it's not about <laughs> their affair it's about their friendship it's about if they like Star Wars if they don't like Star Wars I don't want to say any of it until it's over okay fair well okay. anyway so Luke felt <laughs> responsible for the apprentice turning against you know the Jedi so he left and then Finn asks what happened to him and Han says that there's a lot of rumors and stories but people who knew him best think that he went looking for the first Jedi temple and Rey is like so Jedi are real which I'm a little confused about because I understand that the force is slumbering or whatever so it hasn't awakened yet but is it still not considered fact that they exist like does nobody remember the whole thing with Darth Vader well see that's the thing now now back to when the Jedi were in control, back when like Yoda and Windu were all there, that was close to 50 years ago at this point. Which is not that long. <laughs> yeah, but the galaxy is like a large place. So it's like if you'd never been to Coruscant, maybe you don't know that the Jedi are real. Yeah. Or if the Jedi are real, just because the Jedi are real does not mean that their power is real. Yeah, I guess that's fair. So anyway, so she's like, the Jedi are real. And then Han basically says he used to think it was BS too, but then he, you know, went on this adventure and realize that all of it is true. The Jedi, the Force, all that stuff. And then I thought this was important at the time, but it doesn't end up being important. But Chewie comes over for a second and Han is like, no, you got to rest, which doesn't come up again. <laughs> <laughs> and then Han says that he's going to bring them to an old friend who can help. Yeah. So then they go to a planet. I mean, I always write Earth-like planet, but they're all Earth-like. <laughs> yeah, but this one's like a forest planet. Yeah, we got forests, we've got oceans, we've got, you know... It looks Earth-like. Natural Earth-like. I don't think we even got the name of this planet. No, we didn't. I mean, I'm sure somebody knows it because you can't learn everything from the movies. You have to research it. Yeah, I'm sure it exists. And by the way, Ray is blown away by the trees, which I love. Yeah, I like that you could tell she's never been off her planet before. And you know, that's something that I think, you know, obviously watching the first two trilogies, I was very enamored by the different planets and I was always so confused about like the populations and <laughs> does the whole planet look like this or like what's going on i like to see a character who is as blown away as i am by it so 
yeah. appreciated her <laughs> little moments. So she gets out of the ship. She's like super hyped looking around. Then Finn goes up to Han and he's like, so, Solo, here's the deal. And Han is like, did you just <laughs> call me Solo? And he's like, oh, sorry, Han, Mr. Solo. Anyway, I am a really big deal in the Resistance. So that kind of puts a target on my back. So I kind of want to know what the plan is. And then Han is like, well, you've got another problem because women always figure out the truth. Always. And then he gives him a weapon and he walks away, <laughs> which I love that Han just knows. Yeah. I also liked it when he said that he was like, well, let me tell you something. Big deal. Yeah. He's calling him big deal. Yeah. <laughs> and then Han gives Ray a weapon outside and she's like, I can handle myself. And he says, I know that's why I'm giving you this. And then there's like a funny little interaction where he was like, do you not know use it? And she's like, yeah, you just shoot or you, you just pull the trigger. And he's like, well, it's a little bit more than that. You have a lot to learn. And then he offers her a job on the Falcon. He's like, so I'm looking for more crew members and uh, you're good with the ship. And she's like, are you offering me a job? And he says my favorite line so far of the film, which is, I won't be nice to you. And it doesn't pay much. And I was like, <laughs> I love that. I love that honesty. Yeah. And she's like, you want to offer me a job? And she gets really hyped. But then she's like, no, I can't. I have to go back to Jakku. And then he says, that's too bad because Chewie kind of likes you. And I was thinking Aww. he just offered her my dream job. Yeah? To be a smuggler? No. Or to hang out with Chewie? To hang out with Han Solo and Chewie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you'd actually like their job. I don't want to be a smuggler. I don't know anything about flying. I'm not a pilot. I don't know anything about technology. You In just want to hang out with them. <laughs> I actually struggle to even make content for the internet because I'm so bad at technology. But like hanging <laughs> out with Chewie playing monster chess with Chewie literal dream not so bad not so bad so then they go to <laughs> Maz Kanata yeah and she is voiced by Lupita Nyong'o I knew her voice sounded familiar yeah I love her but I didn't know who that was Maz is incredible yeah I absolutely love her I love her bar that she owns yes I just wrote heck yes we get another fun bar there's some great music coming off and everyone's just having a good time also her first line Line is iconic. What, you're just screaming Han Solo and then everybody stopping? No, her being like, where's my boyfriend? Oh. <laughs> I guess it was her second line. <laughs> that was her second line, yeah. She says, where's my boyfriend? And Han says, Chewie's working on the Falcon. And she's like, I like that Wookiee. <laughs> and I'm like, me too, but not in the way that you like him. <laughs> not that <laughs> not way. Not your type. And then she's like, I assume you need something desperately, so let's just get on with it. So she starts guiding them away. And then I wrote, some woman with wild eyebrows watches them with her giant slug boyfriend and and whispers something to him mm -hmm. and we cut away from her but basically she's with the First Order. She sends word to them and then a droid also notices BB-8 and sends word to the Resistance. So Ooh. something's about to go down. <laughs> yeah. I love that we got both of them being notified at the same time. Very good suspense. For sure. But also I'm like why are they not hiding BB-8? Why didn't BB-8 stay on the ship? Like why is BB-8 just like out and about like roaming free? Equal droid rights baby. He can go wherever he wants. Yeah but he's someone's looking for him. Put him on the Ship. How many BBs are there? Well, he's a unique droid. That's what Poe said. That's true. He does have the orange and white. He's very exciting colors. Yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway. Anyway. Then we go back to Kylo Ren. Great moment. I'm sorry. I'm just very excited because in this moment I did have to pause and like take a breath because <laughs> Kylo is talking to, I mean, I assumed himself in this moment, but he's asking for forgiveness. He says, I feel it again. The pull to the light. The Supreme Leader senses it. Please show me the power of the darkness again please grandfather and I'm like no freaking way yes. here I am just dreaming about romance but it's true because then we see a shot of Darth Vader's mask slash almost kind of looks like a skull because it's like I don't know I guess degraded all broken and burned yeah so basically we do get confirmation that Han and Leia had a baby and it's him and he went dark and he went dark but he doesn't want to be dark he wants to be a good guy but for some reason he's bad I do really love this conflict that we get from our bad guy like I feel like with Darth Vader he was so elusive that whole trilogy like we didn't really get like a ton of his thoughts or his feelings until like the very very end but Kylo Ren mm -hmm. being established as a major character in the franchise with like feelings and thoughts and conflict within him I think is really an interesting choice that I enjoyed yeah I like it and I also just like the contrast because yeah. obviously when you're in a franchise this big you can't just keep having the same movie over and over again. You can't well, just have the same villains over 
Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think this movie is that different from a lot of the other ones, but it's not that. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of things that we have pulled and said this is the same as when it happened in the last trilogy. Yeah. But I think the keeping it the same for the fans while also making it different enough to give us a new story yeah. is cool. Yeah. Meanwhile, we've got Han asking Maz to get the droid to Leia, and Maz is like, no, you've been avoiding this fight for way too long. You got to go home. And I'm like, oh. Please give us the fight. I want to know the tea. <laughs> I already know it, but like, yeah, give us the deets. And then he's like, Leia doesn't want to see me. And Ray, similar to me, is like, What's the tea? Tell us the sitch. Yeah. And she's like, Well, what fight? And then Maz says, The only fight, light versus darkness. And then she has like a little mini monologue where she's talking about the force. Mm-hmm. And then Finn gets a little upset and he's like, We can't beat the first order. We've probably already been spotted. And then Maz starts messing with her glasses. She's got these really really funky alien glasses and she gets on the table and gets really close to him and (laughs) he's like what are you doing what is she doing what's going on and she says when you live long enough you start to see the same eyes in different people and she said she sees the eyes of a man who wants to run which I'm like yeah he just said that yeah (laughs) and then his first line is you don't know a thing about me and I'm like yeah but you literally just said let's run instead so why are you saying it like that he's basically saying though you don't know why I want to run like you don't know what they did to me. You don't know who they are. Yeah. We all need to run. I'm not the only one who should be thinking this. Yeah. So then Maz <laughs> offers him basically an opportunity to disappear. She's like, there's some mercenaries over there. You can pay them and you can just get out of here. And Ray is super upset about it. And Finn is like, why don't you just come with me? And she's like, no, what about our mission? What about BB-8? And he's like, I can't do this. And then he gets up and leaves. He tries to give Han his blaster back. But Han is like, just keep it, kid. <laughs> and then Ray follows after him. And then Maz says who's the girl which everyone keeps on saying this so i'm thinking that ray is the girl yeah like she can't just be a scavenger there's got to be somebody important that she comes from mm. you know yeah and i'm like is this luke's kid because even then that would be weird too that was if- a wavelength i was on as well that it's not me confirming or denying i'm trying to bring myself yeah. back to like when i watched this for the first time and that was a thought that i definitely had as well i know you're not gonna like this yeah but just coming back to the the ray low fan fictions who wants siblings they would be cousins if she was Luke's <laughs> daughter. Ew. So maybe that's not it then. Yeah, I hope it's not it. But she's got to be somebody important has had this child and that's who she is. But anyway, so we see Finn. He starts basically negotiating with the mercenaries and then Ray stops him and pulls him away and he's like, I'm not who you think I am. I'm not in the resistance. I'm a stormtrooper. But my first battle, I made a choice and I ran. And he, <sighs> he says more than that, but I didn't write it all down. It was a great scene though. Gave me chills. It was great. And he says he's done with the first order he's never going back and I am impressed because she's not even mad she's like please don't go and he's like just take care of yourself and then he dips out and she starts tearing up yeah and I'm like they are in love why is he leaving they're in love obviously she loves him too because he's thinking of himself they just met yeah and also I got a little problem with him just leaving because we'll talk about it in the next scene but she hears someone screaming like no come back and I saw in the subtitles it said younger Ray so I was thinking this was going to be like a flashback moment but it wasn't it was kind of just like something calling to her so she hears the sound coming from the basement so she starts going down BB-8 is following her I actually thought it was hilarious that like she's trying to go slowly down and he's just thunking down each step (laughs) next to her and then this random door opens up for her into some room with a treasure chest and I wrote down Skyrim vibes because Mm. everything in my life I try to relate to Skyrim or Pokemon (laughs) or Or Avatar or Avatar (laughs) that's my personality just those three things (laughs) well now Star Wars too is going to be my the fourth aspect of my personality yes rounding you out (laughs) so then she opens up the chest I didn't know what this was at this point I know now that it was Luke's lightsaber yeah it doesn't really look like much when it's not lit up Mm -hmm. to be honest they actually all have different handles and stuff because as we know now they make them themselves but like yeah Mm -hmm. I guess if you're not used to seeing an unlit lightsaber it wouldn't mean anything to you yeah so then she touches it and something happens I I don't know what it would technically be like a hallucination or like a memory or something I would say like a hallucination a test of the force like something like that because remember Luke had something similar when he was with Yoda he saw his 
face in the Darth Vader helmet. Yeah. So something similar like that. So I tried to write down all of the things that she saw. They didn't make that much sense to me, to be honest. I did see in the captions that it said Yoda said something at some point. But then it had like a metal hand. So I was like, is this Yoda? Yeah. So we saw R2-D2. We saw a cyborg hand. Which I think was supposed to be thinking, Luke. Yeah, I was thinking Luke. And Yoda together. I don't know, but. <laughs> <laughs> in harmony. Well, Yoda is just a spirit thingy, right? Yeah. So maybe he was just with him in spirit. Maybe. He also saw somebody dying from a lightsaber of red lightsaber. Yeah. And then we saw Kylo coming for her. We saw younger Rey screaming come back, come back as a ship flies away. And then she's in like this forest that's snowing and she sees Kylo again and then she wakes up. Did I do a good job with all those parts? You did a great job. <laughs> so yeah, she wakes up and Maz is there and she's like, what was that? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have gone in there. And Maz says that lightsaber was Luke's and before that his father's and now it calls to you. Can you just confirm really quick? I thought that Darth had a different lightsaber so darth did but anakin didn't oh yeah because we in the first movie obi gives it obi to him, gives yeah. him a lightsaber and he's like oh yeah this was your dad yeah so he that's... killed a bunch of people with it yeah <laughs> slaughtered children he killed a bunch of young jedi with this lightsaber yeah. slaughtered <laughs> innocent women and children with this so you can have it so she says that the lightsaber now calls to ray and then ray says she's got to get back to jakku and maz says you already know the truth whatever you're waiting for on jakku is never coming back and then Ray starts crying mm -hmm. and then Maz says but there's someone who still could and Ray whispers Luke which I was like I, I didn't understand the phrasing of that sentence someone who still could come back yeah because he left he didn't leave her oh, but okay. he left that's why I was like wait is she confirming that that's her dad <laughs> <laughs> no I guess maybe not okay no. I do really love not only Ray's reluctance and I guess I could say the same thing about Finn too they're so reluctant as heroes and about Luke the reluctant hero, the trope. Yeah. But more than reluctant heroes, the way that they fight and battle is so messy, but they're so dedicated to it. And I do appreciate that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So then Maz has another little mini monologue situation, tells her to close her eyes. She's feel the force, the light that's always been there. It will guide her. And she tells her to take the lightsaber. And then Ray says, I'm never touching that thing again. I don't want any part of this. And then she runs off. The reluctant hero. Yeah, <laughs> I actually do love the reluctant hero trope. I do as well. So meanwhile, on Death Star 2.0, <laughs> I guess it's like 3.0 at this point. Yeah, because they had the first one, the second one that didn't really get anywhere. And now the monster one. <laughs> yeah. So then I have to say, this part made me really uncomfortable. <laughs> I know exactly why it made you uncomfortable. <laughs> it was that salute, wasn't it? <laughs> didn't love that. That little salute. Yeah, it was the salute. Didn't need it. They didn't need it. And it made me so uncomfortable. Yeah. I get what they were going for. Obviously, we're in like this crazy regime situation. I mean, so basically what happens is they're on the Death Star. The Hux guy is giving a speech and you get the red banner in the background with the black. The implication is like a whole... Hitler Nazi situation. Yeah, here. which I really, really don't like when films do that. Neither do I. And I have to say that Star Wars is definitely guilty of doing this in multiple fashions. In one of the side movies, the evil characters are dressed like they're from the Middle East, I think is also something that's like really dangerous and not like mm -hmm. a really well thought out design for a bad character when you know that there are so many people in the world with those xenophobic thoughts. And so then when you're designing your characters, it just like brings up like icky thoughts, in my opinion. And so like this whole Hitler, Germany, Nazi thing. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. I think it's twofold. One, I do think, and I'm sure people will disagree with me and that's totally fine. But I do think that it is, it's appropriate, I think, to try to showcase the severity of a situation, like saying like, this is basically the fantasy version of you know, World War II situation. But I think that when you take it too far, it can become a problem because there are always going to be people like you and I, I would say, yeah. actually tend to be people who enjoy the evil characters yeah. as much as the good characters. And I think it becomes a little bit of a problem when the evil characters are like, hey, so I'm actually a Nazi. Yeah. So then it's like it makes it weird. And then it also makes it uncomfortable because and I, I see this in other fandoms as well. It's like when you wear something that's like 
this is the bad guy's outfit, then people are like, oh, so you're a Nazi. Yeah. And it's like, you know what I mean? So I think in that sense it's bad. And then like you were saying, I don't know which movie you're referencing with the attire, but I think that's also bad when there becomes a different thing, which is a stereotype. Yes. And they're saying like, people who wear this are the evil guys. And then it's like what you were saying, like xenophobic people thinking that. So it's like two separate issues, but I think it it's so inappropriate as an audience member. Like imagine seeing that as a person who lived through, through it. Yeah. that situation. Yeah. And, it, and I will say it was fine up until the salute. And I think that's what took it too far yes. because obviously when he started doing the speech, that was the imagery we were given. You know, he was wearing the garb. He had the flag in the background. I was like, OK, I get it. This is a Nazi situation. But then them all doing a real salute. Yes. That is bad. Yeah. I'm sure it's happened to you. It's happened to me. And it's very inappropriate. Yeah. Anytime it happens to a person. So to just lightly throw that into a movie, messed up. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And it's like, you're a creator, you're a writer, you, you've you imagined this entire world. Why did you have to pull something so triggering to real life mm-hmm. people and then put that in your film? Yeah. I don't really understand that. That was my one gripe with the movie is that- Hated it, hated took it. it way yeah. too far. They could just cut that one little they don't chunk even out. Need just it. him being like, this is the last day of the Republic. Done. Yeah. End of scene. No more is necessary. No, absolutely not. So yeah, that part totally sucked. <laughs> yes, I agree. They could have just made up a pose. Why didn't they just make something up? I know. Everyone doing bunny ears as a way of being like, we're evil. They could have done something different, but it had to be that. Anything else. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure people will disagree. I think there's so many people out there who I, I try not to get into this argument because I don't think it's easy to change people's mind on and that's totally fine. I am not a person who like, I'm not like a separate the art from the artist, separate the fiction from the fact. To me, it's all the same. I agree. Like if, if something is bad, then it's bad. And I just like people are always like, you're missing out on so much great content because you don't like that this person is a racist. And I'm like, I'm not missing out because there's so many great creators who aren't racist. Yeah, exactly. Like, why don't I just enjoy that instead? Absolutely. And I also think in situations like this, when someone says that made me uncomfortable, it's important to listen to the voices of the people who are affected by it. That was the only thing that was going through my mind as I was thinking like, oh, gosh, I hope nobody in my family has ever seen this movie. You know, it's so interesting, too, because my favorite TV show of all time also has some like Nazi Germany imagery in it. But I think that they <laughs> I'm laughing because I remember you're like, this is, again, you trying to suck me into your fandom. I know. You're like, just be warned. Don't be mad. It, it's in, a little bit of a Nazi theme. a situation. little bit of a Nazi theme. But I mean, it's hard to explain it if you haven't seen this show. But I actually think in this show, it is the Nazis. Like, it's supposed it to is. be the Nazis. Yeah. So that's yes. different because it's like it is them. Yeah. The difference is a direct nod like okay you can say these are the Nazis of Star Wars but don't be like these are Nazis these are Nazis let's have them don't salute. call them Nazis yeah. don't do the Hail Hitler don't do <laughs> no. this stuff it's literally a two second clip it could just be removed it doesn't need to just be just remove it and the movie is perfect yeah we well, still get it I don't know, I know it's perfect not perfect yet, but <laughs> <laughs> but anyway that was my big gripe of the section yes I agree I knew you would <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean you and I I think have the same opinion on this stuff and yeah I I think tend to get more trigger happy <laughs> in the sense that I'm like, I'm never watching this again. I hate everybody involved. But you you talk me down, which is good. Yeah, I mean, because I think it depends. I don't think that every bad thing that a person does is a cancelable offense. But it's good to point True, it out no. and say this wasn't yeah. right. Do better next time. No, I, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I don't want anybody to think <laughs> that I'm like huge on cancel culture. Kelly's like quitting the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> done this is her. I'm out yeah no no and, and it's not like that for me but in this case obviously it is fiction they are trying to draw a parallel I get that I don't fault them for it but I do think that that one shot was inappropriate when I say I will never watch this again this and that which I do a lot with tv shows and movies and books <laughs> is only if I find out that the author or creator condones that. condones that behavior yeah that's a totally different thing and I'm not a person who goes like and you know if you like this movie I hate you because blah blah blah. I'm it's just my own personal things. Like I right. won't read certain authors because I know that they've said things that I don't agree with and that's fine. And I think that's totally fine. And I yeah. think it's also totally fine to call other people out and like 
ask them to do better. Yeah. Anywho. Anyway, back to the fun lessons movie. with Lena <laughs> and Kelly. So now, not only have I just told all of our podcast audience about my relationship issues, I know people are going to take it seriously, but I really hope they don't. Yeah. No, th- that's a joke. This is less of a joke. That, well, this, this is, is not, not a, joke. a joke. This is serious. The relationship was a joke. <laughs> this is serious as I'm like dying we're, laughing. We're laughing, but this is serious. This is serious. Anywho, so they have their whole little Nazi moment. Crazy stuff happens. Crazy. And then they're, I, I don't know what to even call it. Like ship, Death Star, Star Killer, Planet Destroyer. What, what do I call it? Star, the Star Killer Base is what they were calling it later. Star Killer Base. So I don't know what the actual weapon is called, but the base is the Star Killer okay. Base. So it does fire. Yeah. And it is intense. Mm-hmm. This thing is shooting across the galaxy, this giant red laser. Kylo is watching it from his ship as it's going towards the planet. Finn, who's running onto the ship with the mercenaries, he sees the red light in the sky and we see planets start to blow up. It actually, I know I just said this is different from the other movies, but it reminded me a lot of when all the Jedi temples were being destroyed because we got a glimpse of people on a bunch of planets watching the the planets get destroyed. I also thought that this was interesting too because when Alderaan got destroyed in episode four, we didn't see like the point of view of anyone actually on the planet, but here Mm -hmm. they did do a couple shots of people watching as their planet was about to be destroyed. Terrifying. What a terrifying moment that must have been. Yeah, moments before death. Well, they did a very good job of it because I was I had chills the whole time. Mm-hmm. So then Finn runs up to Han, clearly having just forgotten about the whole running away situation. And he says the First Order did this. And then he asks, where's Rey? And we see her running through the forest. Turns out BB-8 followed her. And she's like, what are you doing here? You got to go back. You're too important. They see some ships flying flying towards I don't even know what that building was like the building where the bar was where yeah Maz was. where Maz was yeah I don't know so then <laughs> we see Maz giving Han and Finn Luke's lightsaber and Finn's the one who takes it and Han is like where'd you get that and she's like that's a good question for another time I'll tell you later which is hilarious because that's literally just the writers being like rather than explain this let's just say another time <laughs> I was literally thinking that she probably was saying like another time once I figure out how I got it yeah exactly <laughs> We haven't written this yet, so if we ever write it, we'll let you know. <laughs> so then she's like, go find your friend. And then Maz is like, those beasts, they're here. And then we see ships starting to blow up the building and we see Kylo's ship, which is a weird looking ship. It's like a paper airplane. Mm-hmm. I like that it's very easy to identify. Yeah. And then Ray sees a stormtrooper in the distance and she tries to shoot him. <laughs> and we get a funny little moment where she forgot to do the safety yeah. thing. I don't even know what the correct terminology is. That's what she said. She's like, oh, safety. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, do you turn it on or do you turn it off? I don't know. You turn it off, turn the safety off. So it's no longer safe. Now it's unsafe. Oh, that's what it means? Yes. The safety makes it so you can't shoot it. I can't be trusted with a gun. No, I literally (laughs) held a gun once and I cried and I'll never do it again. So then the stormtrooper sees her, starts shooting at her, but then she kills him. And then she has like a moment. And I was like, ooh, is this her first kill? Yes. I wrote that down too. I like that they took that moment to see her reaction to taking someone's life. Love the first kill. Mm -hmm. Always love it. Yeah. It's the best. It got easy for her right after that. She was just like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, and then immediately she's like, killing other killing stormtroopers. <laughs> yeah. And then she retreats. And then we see Kylo walking through the destruction. One trooper tells him that the droid was going west with a girl. And then we see Rey telling BB to just keep going. She's going to fight them off. And then we see Chewie and Han. They're shooting at people. There's just a whole battle raging on. It's very cool. Yeah. We got Finn telling Maz that he needs a weapon. And she's like, you have one in your hand. You're holding a lightsaber. <laughs> And he's like, ah, and then he turns on the lightsaber, which again, a little confused, thought you needed the force in order to use the lightsaber. Good question. He has the force. Oh, <laughs> he has the force. He is the force. <laughs> he is. He's the midichlorian. <laughs> wow. I can't believe you remembered midichlorian. I just remember it's the powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the Jedi. <laughs> powerhouse. <laughs> so then one stormtrooper actually sees Finn and yells like, traitor. And then they have, I wrote a sort of lightsaber battle. Because sort of. Finn yeah. has the lightsaber, but the guy has like, I don't know, spicy weapon. I don't even know what that was. I didn't think it was that cool. It looked so bulky and just out yeah. of, like either use it to shoot or have a thinner version that you fight with. No, I didn't like that at all. I didn't know what it but was. But I did think it actually explained pretty well how Finn was such a natural with the lightsaber. Oh yeah, for sure. Because he's obviously trained to fight. Yeah. So then Finn gets knocked down. He is about to die and Han saves him. 
he shoots something. There I was like that. another little moment. I didn't even write it down where Chewie had like a crossbow. Yeah. And Han is like, ooh, can I see that for a second? And then he uses it, shoots someone. He's like, I like this. <laughs> he shoots down the stormtrooper with that. Yeah. But then stormtroopers do surround them and they have to surrender, drop their weapons. But guess what? <gasps> what? The resistance is coming. And guess what else? Poe's alive. Poe is still alive. Oh, I was so hyped. I actually forgot how good looking he was oh, until he's so he came good back. looking. I can't with him. And I was like, wow, why didn't I mention really can't that? Look in our him. last episode. No, he's so hot. So then they start shooting down the stormtroopers and they end up shooting the ones that were holding Han, Chewie, and Finn. So then they get away, they grab their weapons, they start fighting as well. Somehow Finn knows that Poe, or maybe he doesn't, is alive and in that jet because he's like, that's one hell of a pilot. And then Poe starts whooping. I don't think he knew it was him at that point. He was just impressed with that pilot. I guess well, so. Well, that was a cute <laughs> moment. I take it back. I'm not annoyed by that. I liked it. Yeah, I think he was just impressed by said pilot. I don't know. Or maybe he could see him from the cockpit. I don't know. So then we've got Ray hiding in the forest. She's holding out the blaster so, so far. bad. Yeah. I don't know anything about guns, but one thing I do know is are you supposed to lock your arm like that? Because You shouldn't lock your arm when doing any sort of physical activity. It just seemed really intense for her to be doing that. But then Kylo Ren pops up with his lightsaber. This is giving me the most serious Twilight vibes of my life. In the forest, I sense it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except it didn't go the same way. <laughs> yeah. She's shooting at him. He waves her off and then he freezes her and then he's like walking around her and like the camera's oh, like tilting sideways. That's, yeah, that's very And he's Twilight. like, you're the girl I've heard so much about. And then she's like, I know what you are vampire. <laughs> Just kidding. She say that. <laughs> say it, vampire. <laughs> so he asks where the droid is and he holds the saber, lightsaber, like out to her neck. And I thought that he was starting to torture her, but I guess he was just like mind reading, which I'm like, if you have the power to read minds, why didn't you just do that with Poe? He did. Oh. I didn't want to say it then because it wasn't revealed. He did not torture the information out of Poe. He took it from his oh. mind. So Poe is not a traitor. He did not give up any information. It was taken. I didn't think he was a traitor. We we kind of brushed past it, but I wanted to bring that up again, that that is how Kylo Ren got the information. I just want to give my opinion as somebody who in my lifetime, if I ever get captured and somebody's torturing me for information, I'm sorry. I'm giving it up. I'm not a traitor, but like I don't want to get hurt. I'm curious what I would do in that situation. I've got a pretty high pain tolerance. Yeah, you would hold out for a while, but once it really started going, I think you would give it up too. And you know what? I wouldn't blame you. I would not blame you. <laughs> so yeah, he, he's got mind powers. He says, the map, you've seen it and then a stormtrooper comes and he's like we need more units and kylo's like pull out forget the droid we have what we need and then he i don't know what he does to her but she passes out and then he carries her away yeah. very romantically just kidding mm. i i am not on this <laughs> ship something's gotta happen in, in this movie in order for me to change my mind i'm on no ship i have changed ships since this section. You change ships? Wait, is your ship Finn and Poe? Is that your ship? Yes. <gasps> is that a great ship. ship? I love that. I wish. That would be incredible. When I tell you. Well, the way that Poe looked no. at him. Ooh. <laughs> the way that they look at each I other. I know. It's so. I was like, oh. I knew that that was going to be a moment for you, but we'll we'll get there. We're not there we'll, just we'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> so Han sees him taking her away. So does Finn. He starts screaming. Yeah. I mean, it's hard for me to even say I change ships when this moment happens because because he's screaming, no, no. He starts running and he is distraught because he's in love with her yeah. and they belong together and they will get married and have lots of babies well eventually mm, they don't have to have babies they don't have to but like <laughs> i can tell that like he's a very traditional guy and he wants babies yeah you know? i could see that raise them better than he was raised he wasn't really raised yeah yeah exactly <laughs> that's what he wants so then he runs up to han he's like did you see he took her and han is like yeah i know but he's like very distracted because there is a ship and people are getting off of the ship and he knows who's on it and he knows who's on it i didn't know who's gonna be on it Ooh. but guess what it was leia oh, i love her so much so she sees him <sighs> incredible incredible moment mm -hmm. you know what i change my mind about c3po all the time i like him again he's great this was funny he always does these like stupid things in really inappropriate moments where like leia and han are trying to have this like reunion and he's just like oh yeah. so you probably don't recognize me because i've got this <laughs> arm by the way which is different it's not an arm cutting <laughs> off but it was a nod to an arm which i think 
was funny. Do you think that counts? I don't know if it counts. I was crying laughing when he was like, you probably don't recognize me because my arm is red now. What are you talking about, dude? You are the same. You probably don't recognize me. I'm wearing a different pair of shoes than the last time you saw me. You probably don't recognize me. I was wearing a black t-shirt the last time you saw me. Now I'm wearing a gray t-shirt. You know, I actually have that fear, though, when like I change my hair color that people won't recognize me. And I've like actually introduced myself or been like, oh, yeah, it's been a while. I'm Leah. And they're like, yeah. I know who you are. I'm like, oh, yeah, my hair is oh different. Oh, my gosh, Leo. <laughs> so I am C-3PO in this moment. <laughs> As a person who has cycled through the entire rainbow, I can assure you, people do not notice. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll change my hair color and people will be like, oh, are you wearing new eyeshadow? And I'm like, what are you talking about? My hair was blue the last time you saw me. Now it's red. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I knew something was different. Yeah. People do not notice. Well, thank you. We'll lay my fears for the future. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So they have this hilarious moment where they're like about to have a moment between Han and Leia and I'm living for it and then C-3PO's like hey it's me C-3PO you remember me probably don't recognize me because my arm is red now but don't worry I'm gonna get it fixed and he's like oh Leia did you see Han oh all right uh I'm gonna go (laughs) and then he like takes BB-8 with him which I love that he just takes on that role yeah he's just like all right come along yeah let's let's go they're probably friends they probably met before oh you think they know each other well yeah because BB-8 is a resistance droid oh my gosh you're right I don't know why I thought that they just just didn't know each other. And like Leia and Poe know each other very, very well. Don't say it like that. They're not in love. They know each other very well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. But anyway, so then Han is like, you changed your hair. And she's like, same jacket. And he's like, no, new jacket. And then Chewie comes up and hugs Leia. She's so tiny. And I did tear up a little bit because this line got me. I don't know. It just got me. When he said, like, I saw her son. Yeah. Oh, I'm dead. I'm dead. Like, I can't. It was a lot. There's something so just broken about it. It it makes me so sad to think that, like, obviously what happened between them is that their son turned evil and they they couldn't bear. They didn't know how to handle it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so sad. It is really sad. Like, knowing that this is where we're picking up on these, like, beloved characters, that they've gone through all this, like, pain and it, like, literally tore them apart. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's totally heartbreaking. But anyway, so a bunch of jets are flying off onto this planet where clearly the resistance is and Finn is running around guess who he sees he sees Poe po. his lover his new love <laughs> can we just like ship a thruple between them let's just that ship is, a thruple when I tell you that is and I'm not a thruple person I am a monogamous romance person I will always pick one person over another but I'm like the three of them could do it in one relationship <laughs> I believe it I believe this it this is fine <laughs> I'm fine with this yeah <laughs> so yeah so BB-8 actually sees him first he pushes Finn aside and like goes up to like like beep at Poe happily, which is really cute. Then mm-hmm. Finn runs up to him. They hug. And they also have the exact same gushing moment between each other that Finn and Ray did, where they're like, oh my God, no, you were amazing. No, you were amazing. Yeah. And I didn't think anything of it until Poe was like, that's my jacket. And then Finn starts to take it off. And Poe's like, no, keep it. It suits you. And when I Ugh. tell you. And that's the moment. My heart <laughs> fluttering, fluttering in the breeze. When he looked at him and said he looks good in the jacket, I was like, this man is in love with you. I will believe nothing other than that. You cannot tell me for a second that that actor wasn't thinking of it in like a romantic way. He totally was. Regardless of whether the character is supposed to, that actor was like, no. This is the choice I'm making. Yeah. Yeah. And I live for it. Oh, for sure. Who's going to kiss first? (laughs) If you tell me nobody, then I'm (laughs) quitting this podcast. We'll see what happens. So anyway, Finn is like... Poe, I need your help. Which there's something also about when a character says another character's name, especially romantic interest. It gets me. I don't know. Like when they're like, Leah, I need your help. I feel like in life we don't say each other's names like ever. And Never. there's something very intimate about it. You know? Yeah, there really is. Mm-hmm. So then Poe brings him to Leia and she's like, oh, you're so brave to renounce the First Order and save this man's life. And he's like, wait, I need your help. They took my friend. And she says, we'll help you get Ray, But first, you need to tell us everything you know about that weapon. And this is like a small little thing. I doubt you noticed it, but I'll point her out again when she's actually like in focus. But 
one of the people that was like with Leia in this mm-hmm. moment, it was a girl who had not the same crazy cinnamon bun space buns that Princess Leia had in the first movie, but mm-hmm. she had two little buns on top of her head. That character's name is Lieutenant Connix. I don't think it's ever said, but it is oh, Carrie Fisher's real life daughter, Billy Lord, who's also a queen and I love her so much. Oh, that's so cute. She was in a couple seasons of American Horror Story, but I think it was after you fell off and yeah. she's incredible. I love everything Amazing. about her. So we also get, I keep on saying my favorite moment of this <laughs> section, but this is really my favorite moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. Chewie getting checked out by, I don't know, like a paramedic. A You're so brave. That must have yeah. been scary. He's just like chirping at her and she's like, ooh, you're so brave. <laughs> like talking to him like he's a little kid and he's just this grown Wookiee and he's just like, rrr, rrr, rrr. and she's like, oh, you're so brave. He's like, yeah, I was brave. You know, in the last movie, I was like, I wish that that alien woman was my guy now. I wish that this was my primary doctor. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like I want all, I want people to coo at me. Mm-hmm. Nobody does nope. that. Nope. They're just like, spread them. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, scoot up, scoot up. <laughs> more. You got to scoot more. You got to scoot You got to scoot. You got to keep on keep scooting. On scooting. Keep scooting. Fifty percent of our audience is like, "What are, what you, are you talking about? about?" The other fifty percent, you're seen. Don't worry. You guys get it. You guys get it. <laughs> so then C three PO looks at the map from BB eight, and he says that it's incomplete and the system isn't recognized. So this map almost means nothing. He says there's not enough information to locate Luke. And Leia gets really down on herself and decides to tell everybody in the room that she's disappointed in herself. <laughs> this is the kind of exposition I don't like. Because yeah. she's like, I was so foolish to think that I could find Luke and bring him home. And it's like, okay, we know that's what you're doing. It's fine. Yeah. You don't just say it out loud. To all these people. <laughs> yeah. And then Han is like, Leia. And she's like, don't do that. And he's like, don't do what? And she says, anything. And then they start like arguing and walking off. They said some reference to the Death Star, but I, I didn't really care. Oh, yeah. It was something like the last time you were heroic or something like that. Don't say the Death Star. I don't remember what she said, but something like that. Yeah. So then BB uncovers R2-D2 and tries to turn him on. And C-3PO comes over and he's like, it's doubtful that he would have any information. He went into low power mode when Luke went away and he may never be his old self again. Which again, made me really sad. But also, if BB-8 was like a part of this, why didn't he know that? Yeah, that was for the audience. Exposition. Okay. You know, but yeah, Fair. exactly. BB-8 should have known that. Then we had another little sad conversation of the divorced Ugh, parents. Yeah, that was sad. And Leia laments basically sending Kylo away. I don't know his, what his real name is because they don't say it. You should guess by the end of the podcast. Should I? Okay. Mm. It's probably like Luke Jr. <laughs> I don't know. Luke Jr. Come here, Jr. <laughs> so she says, that's when I lost you both. And then Han says, we had to deal with it in our own ways. I went back to the only thing I was ever good at, which I guess is smuggling, being a bad guy. Being a baddie. <laughs> An anti-hero. And then he says something that really honestly broke my heart. He says, we lost our son forever. Mm. How heartbreaking is that? But she has so much more hope. Yeah, it was Snoke. He seduced our son, but we can still save him. I was laughing as I wrote the note because I was like, out of context, like, this guy seduced our son. We can get him back. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on here? Seduced. All this queer coding all over this film. I know. Can we get some queer action, please? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But anyway, Han is like, Luke couldn't help him. How could I? And then Leia says, Luke is a Jedi, but you're his father. Yeah, I like that line. So meanwhile, Ray wakes up and she is in that torture chair that mm-hmm. Poe was in in the beginning and Kylo yeah. is there and she asks where her friends are and Kylo admits that he doesn't actually know and then he's like you still want to kill me and she's like well that's what happens when you're hunted by a guy in a mask and then he takes off his mask yeah and Kelly's like mm, he's not hot <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not and also another thing that bothers me is when like I get he was trying to do like the evil voice thing I feel like his vocal register is not that low and he's like really so tell me I think yeah. his voice is that low but you haven't seen him in any any other movies so how would you know i haven't kelly it just (laughs) sorry i don't know anything it just seems to me like he's trying to sound like his voice is lower no i would say that's what he sounds like oh it's terrible i like it i hate it (gasps) kelly no i just like him i love him so much i still think he looks like he's going through puberty honestly like i feel like (laughs) you could look at him and be like maybe he'll be attractive when he's older but like right now he's still going through puberty but he's like 30 something in this yeah no he's no hope i guess i don't know i've got hope for him i think he's a hottie but they do have like this weird moment 
where like she just like looks at him and I'm like, does she recognize him or is she just like surprised that he took off his mask? Like, why is she like so put off? I think it's surprise or maybe she's attracted to him. Well, can't relate to that. So he's like, tell me about the droid. And then she starts like happily talking about his parts. Which I'm like, <laughs> why are you saying this? And he's like, no, we need the last piece of the map. So I guess what he's saying is that they have the rest of the map and all they need is this last piece of the puzzle in order to figure out where Luke is. Yes. I think so. How convenient for them. <laughs> and he's like, for whatever reason, that BB droid showed it to you, a scavenger. And he's like, you know, I can take... <laughs> I'm sorry. This is just so funny. He's like, you know, I can take whatever I want. And then he looks into her head before she, I mean, they have like a moment after, but like before she starts, you know, fighting back, why didn't he just use that opportunity to just snatch the map information? Yeah. Well, I think he has to look for it. I don't know. I don't know how mind reading works. I've never done it before. But first he wants to goad her a little bit. So he's like, you're so lonely. (laughs) You're so afraid to leave at night, desperate to sleep. You imagine an ocean. I can see the island. And Han Solo, you feel like he's a father you never had and then i i know he said some sort of bitter thing about he said like oh, he's not even that great or you're gonna be disappointed yeah you, you'll be disappointed and then she's like get out of my head and he's like i know you've seen the map it's in there and now you'll give it to me and i'm like well, just why didn't you take it before you started making her mad because now she's gonna fight back for the audience <laughs> yeah so she's like i'm not giving you anything and he's like we'll see but she's fighting back when i tell you this was the most awkwardly long it was. section where they're just like cutting back and forth between her looking like she's constipated and like, <laughs> him looking like he's constipated and I'm just like, oh my gosh, just fart it out, you know? But that's what happens when mind reading happens in films. They look like they're really concentrated. Yeah. So they're just fighting each other, silent, awkward, embarrassing. And she, I guess, starts to see into his mind and she's like, you're afraid. You're scared. You're never going to be as strong as Darth Vader. Yeah. And then he pulls away mm-hmm. and he's like, WTF. Then we cut to him talking to Snoke about it. And Snoke is kind of reprimanding him. He's like, she resisted you? And he's like, she's strong with the force. She's untrained, but she's stronger. And he was like yelling back. He was so mad. <laughs> yeah, he was super upset. And he was like, she's stronger than she he knows and then Snoke is like what about the droid and then freaking Hux pops in <laughs> and he's like Ren believed that it was no longer valuable to us and that the girl was all we needed and now the droid probably went back to the resistance and gave them the map so now they probably know where Luke is and then Snoke is like well then they need to be destroyed before they can find Skywalker and Hux says he has their location and Snoke is like alright prepare the weapon but Kylo for some reason is fighting this and he's like no I can get the info for the girl and Snoke is like like, then bring her to me if that's true. So I guess he doesn't want his parents to get killed. Yeah. Well, because he's still fighting with the light side. Yeah, true. So then <laughs> Ray's like <laughs> fighting with the restraints. That was funny. And she tries to use the force on the stormtrooper. And she's like, you will release my restraints and you will leave and leave the door open. And he's like, what? And she's like, you're going to untie me and then you're going to leave and you're going to leave the door open. He's like, no, I will not. I'm going to make the restraints <laughs> tighter. <laughs> scum. Yeah. <laughs> so then she tries tries it again they're like looking at each other again for a really long time and then she's like you're gonna untie my restraints and then you're gonna leave the door open he's like i'm gonna untie the restraints and i'll leave the door open and then as he's leaving she's like and and you're gonna drop your weapon (laughs) and he's like and i'm gonna drop my weapon and then he drops his weapon she's pretty strong with the force and then kylo walks in finds her gone and starts having another tantrum he's like screaming and he's destroying the chair with his lightsaber and meanwhile this massive star killer weapon is charging and the resistance is having like a little conversation telling the crew about the weapon and what they've learned from Finn and I guess other sources I don't know but basically it's a hyper light speed weapon built within a planet and we also learn because somebody else is like oh it's like the Death Star and they're like no it's actually way bigger, way bigger than Death Star a little reference <laughs> also there were a few little cameos I guess in this scene of other actors that I know from other TV shows that I like there was Miles from Lost and Matt from Heroes. And that means something to some people. And it means nothing to anybody else. But I was excited to see them. I have seen Lost, (laughs) but I watched it when it first came out, so I don't remember anything about it. Oh, yeah. He was on one of like the last seasons. But Miles from Lost, and I I believe it's Matt from Heroes. But Heroes was only good for one season. But it was exciting (laughs) to see them. (laughs) So anyway, we also learned that the Starkiller base planet 
fighter, whatever it's called, I don't know. He <laughs> uses the power of the sun. So then Han is like, well, how do we blow it up? Because there's always a way to blow stuff up, right? And they say that if they can destroy the oscillator, I mean, this is all stuff that kind of went over my yeah. head, but I'm just trying to pick out the important part, which is they got to blow up the oscillator and that will destroy the weapon. And then Finn says that he can disable the shields, but he has to be on the planet. So Han and Chewie offer to take him. And there's a little moment with Leia where she's like, oh, I don't want you to go. Mm. But, you know, he's got to do what he's got to do. Yeah. And then we have everybody saying goodbye to each other. So Finn and Poe have their little goodbye moment. And Finn is looking after him like, yeah. I am I love, with love you. you so much. <laughs> I'm starting to worry, though, that Finn is just in love with everybody who talks to him. Yeah, he just likes Because he's people. so deprived of affection. Yeah, that's what I said. Love language. Physical touch, baby. But I'm baby. still on board with this thruple. I'm <laughs> fine with it. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm into that, too. And then Leia comes and says goodbye to Han. Honestly, you probably loved this moment. I didn't because I'm a fan of overt affection and not like, I love you, I know affection. <laughs> you wanted them to make out. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I guess I missed you. And he's like, it wasn't all bad, was it? And she's like, it was kind of good. And I'm just like, just say how you feel. Tell him you love him. Yeah, they were going around a little. And she said something like, no matter how much we fought, I love watching you leave. And he's like, that's why I leave. So you'll... No, I hate watching you leave. Oh, did I say I love watching you leave? I was thinking yeah. of like, I hate to watch you go, but I love to watch you walk away. <laughs> but he, yeah, I hate to watch you leave. And he says, that's why I do it, so that you'll miss me. And she's like, I did miss you. Yeah. Stop. And then Leia also says, if you see our son... Bring, bring him, him home. home. Little tear. Bring him home. We don't have to sing. Do you know that show? No. <laughs> That's lame is. Anyway. <laughs> that was intense for me. You're like, stop that. So yeah, that is it. That's the end of our section. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen next, though. I think we're going to get a reveal, but not in this movie, of who Ray's father is. Or mother. I don't know. You want to give a little guess a on what Kylo Ren's real name might be? I don't know. Ryan? Wait, that would be funny. <laughs> His name was Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> world doesn't have like a lot of normal names I guess besides Luke. So you're telling me to guess a name of like somebody in another galaxy. I don't know. Is his name Sherpley? Sherpley? <laughs> yeah. How'd you get that? I got it right. Yeah. Sherpley. Sherpley. Sherpley Solo. Yeah. I, I don't know. Jeff Solo. Jeff Solo. <laughs> you're not giving me any hints. I know. I just wanted to see if you could think of like what his name Oh my name gosh. Wait. Could he be named? No, they wouldn't name him after Anakin, would they? It was Anakin Solo. That'd be a crazy person to name him after. Not like full out calling him Anakin, but like maybe like Annie yeah. or something. But uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's Sherpley. Sherpley, that's okay. Be my that's official guess. Official guess. I like it. And I do, I I mean, I'm concerned. I thought we were going to see Luke in this movie. Now I'm not so sure, but I'm, I'm maybe we'll see him right at the end. I mean, it's a trilogy. And yeah. they knew coming into this that it was going to be a trilogy, right? They did know going into this that it was going to be a trilogy there is mm -hmm. one thing that kind of threw a huge wrench in this trilogy which is that Carrie Fisher actually passed away during the filming of the next movie oh my gosh yeah so that was heartbreaking for reasons that don't even have to do with the film because I just love her so much and it was very upsetting but wow. it did definitely alter the course of this trilogy dang really oh my gosh yeah. wait that makes me really upset it is really sad for Han <laughs> but also for you because I know you like yeah, yeah 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 but yeah yeah, I, I, I genuinely, I feel like I'm getting so bad at this predicting thing because I have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, I feel like I can easily predict something like, oh, this guy's parents are going to be Luke or Leia. Yeah. But, like, I can't predict, like, where the movie is going to go, you know? Are they going to, you know, defeat the Star Killer base? Is Kylo Ren, I almost said his real name, <laughs> is Kylo Ren going to come back to the light side, you know? I don't think he's going to come back in this film. I think because it's a trilogy, I think it's going to take a lot of time for him to get there. Yeah. Maybe the second, like, halfway through the second or even into the third. And then maybe the third, he's going to have his redemption arc where he you know, fights back using what he knows. Yeah. But I couldn't even tell you what's going to happen next. And I still feel like Ray is going to be somebody important, but I don't think we're going to find out in this film. Yeah. I think we're going to find out in the next film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to be a reveal, like the Luke, I'm your father, which is, again, an incorrect quote. It's no. No. I am your I father. I am your father. Great moment. Which is way cooler. Remember when you thought he was going to like be giving a speech and in the middle of the speech like say, Luke, I am your father. Yeah. The, the way that people say it. Although I, I think about this a lot because I will say still that was the coolest part of the franchise was that, that reveal, yeah. even though it wasn't a surprise to me. But I do understand why people have changed it so that they can quote it because unless you're in a very specific conversation 
conversation where somebody says something like, oh, like, I'm your dad or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not going to come up in conversation properly to be like, no, I'm I your father. am your father. And it gives you the context of where it's from. I'm also sure yeah. that that 70s show misquoted it because they were all about Star Wars on that show. I don't know if you watched it, but. I loved that 70s show, but I did not have any context for any of the Star Wars movies. But again, that was actually what I was thinking of because I saw a trailer for that 90s show that they just came out with. Oh, yeah, that just came out. I'm excited to watch I have that. not watched it, but I saw that there was a quote from Topher Grace, which I already forgot his name, Eric Foreman. Yeah. And he says, as the great Yoda once said, mm-hmm. do or do not, there is no try. And I was thinking, that's so interesting because even in the 90s, at this point, correct me if I'm wrong, had there only still been the trilogy, just those three movies? In the 90s. Yeah. And he says, do or do not, there is... No, he says that in the original trilogy, though. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that he is an obsessed Star Wars fan and he's only seen the three movies. So I am going to go ahead and give myself permission to invite myself, just walk on into the Star Wars fandom. Those of you who are mad about the lightsaber situation, I'm sorry, but I'm a part of your fandom now. Yeah. You, you can't take this away from me. But Eric Foreman was like the original Star Wars because he saw it live in theaters. Fun fact, I'm pretty sure his kid in that 90s show is named Leia. Oh, yeah. Because, well, throughout like that 70s show, he would always say, oh, I'm going to have two kids, Luke and Leia. That's always what he wanted to name his kids. So oh if gosh. it is Leia, I would love that. I'm so excited to watch that show. But yeah, I am a Star Wars now. So. Welcome to the Star Wars. Thank you. I will get a tattoo of the Rebel Alliance <gasps> and of the Death Star. Oh my Star. god, I have that. Just kidding. I don't have any tattoos. <laughs> Anywho, we're going to be back next week. We're going to find out all about Kylo's real name, Sherpley Solo. <laughs> Sherpley and Solo. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. So come back, join us. Don't forget, we're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. You can interact with us. Tell us your thoughts. Don't tell us any spoilers. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. You've been listening to the It's All Geek to Me podcast, hosted by Leah and Kelly. Make sure to hit subscribe in your favorite podcast player and give us a rating. You can also follow us on Twitter at All Geek Podcast. New episodes drop every Thursday. See you next week.